Good morning, everyone, and thanks for attending our session about integrations and overview of the Salesforce APIs. It's great to have you here. My name is Cleston Oliveira. I'm a cloud architect with Salesforce. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm a cloud architect with Salesforce. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for over 12 years, uh, an employee of Salesforce, a very happy employee of Salesforce for over three. Um, I have done, over the course of those 12 years, about 400 plus integrations of Salesforce with my own bare hands and blueprinted north of a thousand of others. And today we're going to be covering what those APIs are, what they're good for. Um, we're going to have an overview of how they work, what use cases they would serve. And that has to fit in a 20 minute window. So I'll be very happy to take any questions you guys have offline right here next to the stage. Before we get started, remember that we are a forward looking business, always getting ahead of the game, always innovating. But your purchase decisions should be made on the basis of the information, um, of the functionality that's available on the platform today. So if I'm talking about something that's roadmap, I'll just raise my half line that way, and you know what's the story. So, Intro and overview over the platform and its API. So first of all, let's set the tone on what we mean by platform. Um, I'm not going to go historical and say what platform used to mean in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, but today a platform is something that can multiplex the reach of information and functionality that you already have on your business and make it reachable, make it utilizable and valuable to your employees and customers from whatever terminal, whatever device they want to reach for it at, right? So essentially, a platform is something that sets functionality in motion, that turns ideas into functionality that can be utilized from wherever. Now, let's talk about that more intimately. A platform today is something that will enable your employees, your customers, and your devices to speak at the speed that they talk in a deterministic and undeterministic way, capture all of that gracefully, and operate at multiple clocks, right? A platform is supposed to handle the steadiness and the slow motion of relational data that we used to call master data over the years, right? It is also supposed to take on the transactional data that is produced as a consequence of your day-to-day -day business, as your customers consuming your products, your customers being serviced for the products that they have purchased or procured from you. And it is also uh, about listening to what they say about those in social media, as we just saw in a previous uh, presentation, right? It is also about doing all of that in a mobile fashion, in a multi-channel fashion, and sustaining all of those different means of communication gracefully and making sure that those systems work in tandem. Now, those integrations, they range beyond the reach of data. They also touch processes that spam across multiple applications or multiple parts of your business, right? And the Salesforce API set will enable you to coordinate all of that, to make sure that all those exchanges happen in the best, most optimal way so that the user that you are serving as an architect, as a developer, in front of the device that serves them best, will have the functionality that they're after, will have the data that they have after at their fingertips with no hiccups, right? So when we're talking about integration, and before I touch on the APIs, it doesn't matter how awesome our APIs are if you're not a diligent architect. So in order for your architecture to be solid, you need to understand what is the data that the user needs to have at their fingertips, how they're going to reach for it, which devices, which channels are they going to need, where is this data mastered, how we're going to retrieve it or talk back to those systems, what are the points of mastering, what are the points of change, what are the points of volatility, what's the speed of each type of data that you're integrating, and if that communication link doesn't work, what's my compensation strategy, right? So, Whatever I'm presenting from this point onwards does not preclude due diligence. Now, as I assume, you are very diligent people, <laughs> and we're going to do that piece of the homework right. Let's look at what we have available to us within the Salesforce platform in order to 
have our systems talking to one another in a way that makes our users productive and happy. So on the lower bulk, we got Salesforce being talked to through different channels, right? We have Java SDKs, Ruby Gems, different applications that are reaching out to Salesforce to retrieve data. Okay, that can be done through SOAP or REST calls. We have those APIs. We're going to drill into that uh, more comprehensively. The one next up is the bulk API where you can hand over to the Salesforce platform or retrieve from it massive amounts of data in an asynchronous way. Right? You just flatten out this data, give it to Salesforce, we'll digest it, correlate it, and roll it in very gracefully. Then we have the next newcomer. It's something that we have been talking a lot about in the last three years, even more in the last two. And actually now, with the arrival of the 4.0 version of the OData protocol, on which Salesforce Connect relies, we can federate data from third-party systems, meaning we can introspect the schema of the data as it comes from a third-party system, core or not. We'll have metadata about that, and we're going to treat it as if it was Salesforce native. Right? And we'll spend some more time on that. However, the important thing to remember about this, this data is at no point in time persisted within the Salesforce realm. Okay? It's just leveraged within it. Then we have the Bio client, uh, or the streaming API and the eventing API. So for all of you reminiscing from the message queuing days, that's how you work. Right? This is for eventing and syndicating data from the Salesforce platform out into the world and also from the outer world onto salesforce.com. How is that different from the crude API? Net, net of it is the crude API is, is an API that you call and you get a now and wow picture of how things are. You retrieve an object, you update an object, right? And the granularity is at the record level. When you're looking at streaming, you have data that's in motion and data that's in motion, not just as it's been consumed and changed, it's been consumed and changed across multiple systems, and that goes in some kind of a cirunda, right? And that, that, that is the essential difference. It's not that you fetch something and you do something with it. It's, I consumed something, I let someone know that I consumed it. I added something to it. I put it back on a topic, and everybody else can be informed by it, just as it goes, all right? Now, it's not all about them talking to us, then there's also us talking to them. <laughs> and then with Apex, we can go out and call third-party web services, RESTful or SOAP-based, and then we can introspect that data persisted, deal with it at the data or the process level as we see fit, right? And we also have our old friend outbound messaging, which is a fair complete that you produce inside of Salesforce. It's a message that you're going to configure, and you're going to associate a triggering event or multiple triggering events with it, and then you have a schema in the shape of a whistle that you're going to hand out to a third party and say, hey, I'm going to talk to you like this. That's the shape of the message. You just got to let me know. You got to acknowledge that you received it, and our talk is done. All right? Now, all of these APIs are there readily available for you, but in order to use them, we need a toolkit that um, will, will facilitate that talk, right? APIs are not very interfaceable in the, in the way that they inherently look. So we have our old friend Workbench that has served us so well for so many years in a row, but we got coming up, uh, left hand, <laughs> forward looking statement, the API Explorer. Right, which is also going to enable us to navigate those APIs, provided inputs, and model the outputs so that we can leverage it in a more cohesive way and expedite our development cycles. Salesforce, so DX, Postman, and our old friend Curl, all very valid tools to talk to those APIs and model them, expediting your development cycle. Now, when we're talking about integration, first point made, the due diligence, right? then your compensation strategy, then your best API, then your integration dependencies uh, in terms of not just security, but uh, the permissions within the security. Salesforce is an identity-obsessed platform. Within Salesforce, every piece of data was created by someone, belongs to someone, was last modified by someone, and all of that is time-stamped. 
right? Whether you're interacting with it through the interface, or you're calling a crude API that is granular at the <coughs> overall record level, or you're eventing it so that you are granular at the event or field set level, if you will. Uh, you also have to take into account the context of the session under which your API is talking to the platform, or the session from which the API is talking to another system, right? So this is very important on two fronts. The first of them is for your audits, right? If you're dealing with uh, information that is sensitive, you have, obviously, your security settings and your permissions and your entitlements all set onto it. And from an identity perspective, you already have tools that are taking care of that and auditing the, that access. On the other hand, you also need to make sure that the usage of the entitlement is true to form. So you don't want an API acting on my behalf and updating a record under someone else's session. Right under a generic API session, because then I'm losing the fine grain of who actually did it or instigate that data interaction. So remembering that users have their profiles and their associated licenses, and that permeates what they can do or what can be done on their behalf by an API user is paramount. The other one is, there was a time we used to persist username and passwords and add an additional security token on top of the password of the API user. That was before we had OAuth. All right? So we moved on from that, and today we live in a world where you can have a bear of assertion token for your API user or for your connected app that can be used to authenticate itself as a client to the API and then get access tokens that are going to get you granular uh, sessions onto the platform through which you can have well-secured exchanges on the inbound and the outbound that are identity aware. So the instigating user or the actually modifying user is pervasive across the entire transaction. Now, that's the one part, long and verbose. The second part to it is when you're federating data from third-party systems, right? You can authenticate that exchange on a principal username basis, meaning Salesforce has a trusted relationship with the federating party, authenticates itself as your Salesforce environment. Or you can authenticate that on the basis of the user that's interested in fetching that set of data that resides on a third-party system that's going to federate it onwards. In that scenario, both the Salesforce platform and the third-party system have to recognize the same identity provider that will authenticate the user in this front and also that front, right? Uh, and, and that will get you a cohesive user uh, across the entire spam of the platform. Now, when we're talking integrations, we also have the deeper customization elements to it, right? So we don't have to call just a crude API and retrieve an object. We can query, we can uh, do SOCO queries that are deterministic queries, or we can do SOSO queries and search pieces of the string of data that can be done through an API call in the exact same way that you do it on the interface. It all doesn't have to be SOCO coded. It doesn't have to be Apex. You can produce logic in the point and click declarative good old way, right, with Process Builder. And you can invoke that from your so-called, you can invoke that from your Apex as it goes. Now, just recapping, our crude APIs come on two flavors, right, SOAP and REST. Most of you might know that, but it's worth reiterating the fact that every time you create a new data definition within the Salesforce platform, it will automatically be available through both APIs. Right? You can Im immediately call a describe API, and it will describe that new data structure that you've set with all of its associations pertaining to security and constraints and, uh, and, and the data model itself. Now, those endpoints will be also available, and that's not on my slide, and that's a glitch, um, for external objects. So when you're introspecting objects through the OData API, the so-called Salesforce Connect API, 
as we mentioned earlier, we're going to introspect the schema of that data set from the third party, the federating system onto it. We're going to create an object that will be marked with an underscore underscore x at the end of it. And though we are not persisting that data, you can use the crude API to reference those objects just as you could with a standard object or a custom object. They can all come together in a single SQL query. They can also be referenced in a single report and as the story goes. Now, drilling down a little bit more on the Apex integration services we mentioned onwards, now you can programmatically invoke a web service, SOAP or REST-based, from a third party through Apex into Salesforce. Interesting note, if it's a SOAP-based um, web service and it is profile 1 or 1.1 compliant, properly compliant, you can use the WSDO parser to parse the WSDO and create the introspecting Apex that will, that will help you map out the data both on the input and on the output. The REST endpoints, they are self-descriptive, right? They're not going to have that perk, but they will be invoked in a pretty similar way. All of this information is available in a much more granular way. You can do trails on the crude APIs, the SOAP and REST have been there for the longest time, on the uh, bulk API for mass exchanges of data, as well as Salesforce Connect and the intricacities of leveraging information from third-party systems without persisting it or establishing a co-mastering or data duplication scheme around it. Uh, all of those badges are there for you to be had on Trailhead. I strongly encourage you to uh, familiarize, familiarize yourselves with them. Uh, the last one, and one that's getting more comprehensive over time, is the streaming and eventing API. There are trails available for that as well. Those interfaces are purely RESTful uh, and pretty easy to, in, uh, to implement. And they will satisfy an array of use cases where that data siranda is happening, as we mentioned earlier on. So I would strongly encourage you guys to go and do those trails, even if you already have some exposure and experience with the Salesforce APIs. And that will be all for my slides today. Any questions, I'll be happy to take them right on the right-hand side. Thanks for coming.